Hello, everyone. Welcome to class. Today, we will talk about generative adversarial networks, GAN. This is one of the most breakthrough ideas in machine learning in decades. So you can call it game or gun in American English. In Chinese, G means ge and an means an, so maybe you can call it gan, but be careful about your tone. Before formally introducing GAM, let's look at some examples first. Perhaps the most famous application of GAM is deepfake, which can swap the face of a person in a video. Here's an example from the deepfake website. Okay, the actress uh, Amy Adams, the, her face has been swapped into Nicolas Cage. This has a wide application, some are illegal. So now Collab, Google Collab banned the training of deepfake. The other famous application of GAM is this website. This is called This Person Does Not Exist.com. Then this website can generate a human face randomly if you click it every time. It is made by NVIDIA. There are two examples. So you can see that the face images are very realistic. Maybe you can find your dream lovers by visiting this website. The father of GAM is Ian Goodfellow. He is also the author of Deep Learning, the most popular textbook of deep learning. So this is the architecture of GAM. GAM includes two parts. One is generator networks and another one is discriminator networks. The generator uh, accepts random noise as input and then generate fake images. The discriminator try to tell real images and uh, fake images apart. Okay, the original author says that the generative model can be sold as uh, analogous to a team of counterfeiters. Uh, counterfeiters try to produce fake currency and uh, use it without detection, while the discriminative model is analogous to the police trying to detect the counterfeit currency. So those two networks are compete with each other. So competition in this game uh, drives both teams to improve their methods until the counterfeits are indistinguishable from the genuine articles. In other words, uh, the generator try to make more realistic fake images, while the discriminator try to uh, improve to tell or to detect the fake images, to tell which one is fake. Oh. And uh, those two are compete with each other until you let the discriminator cannot uh, identify which is fake. Oh. So the fake image, the counterfeits are indistinguishable. Then we, su we succeed to have a good generator that can generate a realistic fake image. The photos generated by the generative adversarial networks are so real that we humans are difficult to tell uh, if the photos are fake or not. So this is a breakthrough idea. Young Lacken, the godfather of deep learning, said that oh, there are many interesting recent development in deep learning. The most important one, in his opinion, is adversarial training, also called GAM. So this, uh, he considered, is the most interesting idea in the last 10 years in machine learning. So here is the link of the original talk of the author, Ian Goodfellow. Of, so you can watch the original day, uh, video lecture and uh, the paper. Before introducing games, let's see what is the generative model. Informally, 
as the name suggests, generative models are used to generate new data instance. While the discriminative models, like classification, are used to discriminate between different kinds of data instance. Formerly, the generative models try to learn uh, the joint probability p of x and y. Uh, x are the data and the y are the labels. Or just p of x if there are no labels. The discriminative just try to uh, learn a conditional probability p of y given x. Remember the uh, Bayesian theory, right? Uh, the naive Bayesian, or uh, the Bayesian theory, try to use the conditional probability to learn the classifier uh, to classify data into different classes. The bottom line is training generative models is hard. Regarding discriminative models, we only need to learn a function uh, that us split the data in the vector space. So here is an example. Suppose we want to train a cluster figure that classify amnist images. Then we learn a function that can split this vector space. Then the data points in the upper part of the space belongs to zero, while the data points below the function are image one, right? uh, but for generative model, we need to learn the distribution. We need to learn how the zero looks like. So it's equal data distribution in the vector space. So we need to learn the zero uh, data point distribution, also the one data point distribution. This is much harder than training a class of year. In order to train generative models, Ian Goodfellow has proposed a novel framework called Generative Adversarial Networks, also called GAM. So GAM uh, uses two subnetworks. One is called Generator, uh, and another one is called Discriminator. The Generator uh, is to generate uh, data. Uh, in this case, it's accept random noise as input, then generate fake image. The discriminator is to discriminate between real image and the fake images. So discriminator is a classifier that classify images into real or fake. The two subnetworks compete with each other, like game theory. So the generator is try to improve itself or try to generate more realistic fake images while the discriminator also uh, work hard to increase its ability to classify real and fake images. So the network uh, compete with each other uh, compete with each other until that they achieve an equilibrium state let the discriminator can no longer discriminate between fake images and the real images. Then we have a perfect generator that can generate fake data. This is how game train a generative model. There are two laws in game structure. One is the discriminator laws. And otherwise, the generator laws. And we need to train the two subnetwork alternatively. In other words, we need to first fix generator and train the discriminator, try to reduce the loss. Then we fix discriminator, but we will reuse the parameters in discriminator. We just fix the weights or fix the parameters. And then we train the generator uh, to reduce the loss of generator. Uh, but in fact, uh, because we want to cheat uh, the discriminator, so the loss of discriminator will increase, uh, while the loss of generator will decrease. So those two subnetworks are compete with each other. 
So one thing to note is there is no guarantee that the uh, scam network converge. So it's very difficult to train. We train the discriminator first. The discriminator laws penalize the discriminator for misclassifying a real instance as fake or a fake instance as real. So it's penalized the misclassification and it updates its weight through the back propagation. Okay, so this is the training of discriminator. In this phase, uh, we didn't train generator, we just uh, train the discriminator, uh, use the real images and the fake images. After the training of discriminator, we will train generator, uh, but uh, we will reuse the parameters of discriminator uh, during the training of generator. Okay. So first, we use render noise as input for generator, or then it generates the fake data sample, then pass the fake data into the discriminator and then calculate the generator loss. When we do back propagation, we will back propagate through the uh, neural network of discriminator. The weights are fixed, but we will use the parameters. So to calculate the back propagation, uh, then we will train the updated parameters in the generator. This is the training of the generator in the game network. There are the training steps of the generator. First, we sample random noise. And then we pass the random noise to the generator and uh, produce or uh, generate fake data from the sampled random noise. And then we get the discriminator to classify if the output is real or fake. Then calculate the loss from the discriminator classification. Then we do back propagation through both the discriminator and the generator to obtain gradients. And then use the gradients to change only the gradient, uh, the generator weights. So uh, in the training of generator, we will reuse the weights of the discriminator, uh, but we only update the weights of the generator. In general, the training of generative adversarial networks is an alternating training. We first train the discriminator for one or more epochs, and then we train the generator for one or more epochs. Then we repeat step one and two to continue to train the generator and the discriminator networks alternatively. So when is the training converged? The training is converged if the discriminator performance gets worse because the performance of uh, the generator becomes better and they generate more realistic fake data, so the discriminator performance gets worse. So if the generator succeeds perfectly, then the discriminator will achieve 50% uh, accuracy. Now this is because uh, it's like guess between real or fake, so when the discriminator uh, has a 50% accuracy, then the generator uh, succeed perfectly. What are the loss functions used in GAN? In the original paper, uh, Ian Gerbedo uh, proposed to use the minimax loss. Uh, the loss function that minimizes the loss of generator while maximizes the loss of discriminator. But in later research, uh, Researchers propose to use the Vincent loss, which is the default default loss function of TF gain estimator. Well, researchers find that this loss can produce better results. Let's look at the minimax loss. X is the real data. P of X is the discriminator's estimate of the probability. 
that the real instance x is real. So the higher the output of the d of x, uh, the higher probability that the input x is real. Ex is the expected value over all real data instance. G of z is the generator's output when given noise input z. Therefore, the d of g of z is the discriminant discriminator's the estimate of the probability that a fake instance is real. So the generator will try to cheat the discriminator to make this output as higher value. So EZ is the expected value over all generate fake instance G of Z. Uh, finally, the author used cross entropy laws uh, between the real and the generate data distribution. Uh, so the goal is to maximize uh, the uh, expected value, uh, maximize this uh, objective function at the expected value over uh, d of x plus the expected over log of 1 minus d of g of z. In terms of discriminator, we will try to maximize the objective function, while in terms of the generator, we will try to minimize uh, the expected value of this objective function. In Vance's 10 laws, the discriminator does not actually classify instance, so it's not binary classification now. The output of the discriminator does not have to be between 0 and 1. Instead, all the discriminator training now just try to make the output larger for real instance than for fake instance. Okay. The loss uh, is now called critic loss. The discriminator tries to maximize the difference between its output on real instance and the fake instance. So uh, the output of real instance x or d of x uh, minus the d of fake data uh, d of g of z, uh, the difference should be maximized. Uh, this is called critic loss. Uh, on the other hand, the generator loss of d of g of z, uh, the generator will try to maximize the discriminator's output for its fake instance. All the laws use the earth mover distance to calculate the difference. This is Vance's 10 laws. Generative adversarial networks are difficult to train. They are notorious for training. There are some common problems of training game networks. First is the problem of strong discriminator. If the discriminator is too good, then the generator training can fail due to managed gradients. In other words, if the discriminator is too good, then the generator always fail and do not know how to update its weights. For example, if uh, the test of a class are too difficult, then the students uh, may give up learning because they always fail. This is the uh, problem of strong discriminator. The second problem is called mode collapse. The generator may learn to produce only one output. When the generator succeeds in cheating the discriminator once, then it will continue uh, producing the same output. Okay, the third problem uh, is failure to converge. Uh, it's very common because there is no guarantee of convergence in training game networks. So it's very difficult to train a good game network. Okay, the solution to the failure to converge is first, ending noise to discriminator or inputs, and then penalize discriminator weights. Those are some common problems of training GAN networks. There are a bag of tricks to help training games. 
First, use tangent edge as the last activation function in the generator uh, instead of sigmoid because the tangent edge output is between 1 and minus 1. And then sample points from the latent space using a normal distribution. Okay, and the randomness, uh, stochasticity, uh, is good to reduce robustness. So introduce uh, randomness during training uh, helps prevent game to get stuck. So how to introduce randomness into the networks? First, use dropout in the discriminator and then add some random noise to the labels for the discriminator. Also, sparse gradients can hinder game training. There are two things that can induce gradient sparsity. First is max pooling and then second is ReLU activation. We can use stride convolution for down sampling instead of max pooling. And we can use leaky ReLU, which allows small negative activation values. In the generated images, it's common to see checkerboard artifacts caused by unequal coverage of the pixel space. The solution is to use a kernel size that is divisible by the stride size. Those are the bags of tricks for training games. There are some examples of checkerboard artifacts. Those artifacts are caused by unequal coverage of the pixel space in the generator. The solution is to use a kernel size that is divisible by the stride size in uh, convolution 2D and the convolution 2D transpose in the downsampling and upsampling uh, convolution functions. So those artifacts are looks like checkerboard, so that's why it's called checkerboard artifacts. Let's try to build and train a generative adversarial network for generating celebrity faces. This example comes from Shirley's textbook, Deep Learning with Python, second edition. And you can download the IPython notebook from here. Uh, we use the celebrity A data set, which was uh, created by the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And uh, there are around 200,000 faces, face images in the data set. First, we need to load images from the directory in our computer. So unzipped the Download data set into a folder. Here we call it select a underscore game. Then call the data from directory function from the Keras utilities. Okay, so the folder name is here, and we only use the images, not the labels. So you can set the label mode to none. We resize the image to 64 by 64 for easy uh, training and uh, the bench size also we set the smart resize uh, to true which means we will keep the aspect ratio uh, finally we normalize our data set uh, by divided by 255 let's create the generator network the generator accept noise vector, then create a fake image. So first, we need to define the dimension of the noise vector of the random noise. We select 128, so the latent dimension of the noise vector is 128 dimensional vectors. And then we create a sequential model. First, we add the Keras input layer. Then we upscale the input noise vector. We want to create first a 8x8 uh, feature map, 8x8 by 128. So we add a densely connected layer. Then we reshape the vector into a 8x8 by 128 feature map. 
then we will use three convolution to the transpose layer which will up scale each feature map uh, double the width and the height of each uh, feature map uh, it's like the reverse process of convolution 2d so it's called convolution 2d transpose okay so pass through the first uh, convolution 2d transpose we will get a new feature map which uh, whose size is a uh, 16 by 16 by 128 and we use the key redo as our activation function and then we pass the second uh, convolution to the transpose layer now the feature map size is 32 by 32 by 256 uh, then we pass the feature map again uh, through the third convolution to the transpose uh, now it's 64 by 64 by 512 remember we want an image with 64 by 64 size so the final size of the of the visual map is uh, 64 by 64 uh, but remember we want an color for image so the uh, channel size should be 3 so we add another convolution 2d to reduce the size of the channel so we apply the uh, kernel size 5 and the sigmoid activation to the channel the final output of our generator is the 40, uh, 64 by 64 by 3 which is uh, as the uh, celebrity image size then let's create the discriminator network it's more like the general convolutional neural network but now we use the key ray rule as activation function and we also use strides too we don't use the max pooling now so that's the major difference between the discriminator network and the common cnn network otherwise they are very similar so we use stride two uh, three layers uh, and then finally we, we need to add a drop out uh, at the output of the convolution network this is important trick <laughs> finally we add one uh, activation function uh, sigmoid because it's a binary classification and uh, this is our discriminator network The training process of GAM is a little bit complicated. Here are the steps. First, we draw random points from the Gaussian distribution. Then we generate images using this random noise with the generator. Then we mix the generated images with real images. Then we use the mixed data to train discriminator to distinguished from real and fake images so it's a binary classification then we fix the discriminator's weights and then draw random points again from the generator and the train generator to generate fake image and the full discriminator so this is the training steps of game and we will repeat this process until uh, the performance of discriminator get worse uh, close to 0 0.5 in other words if we successfully fool the discriminator then the accuracy of the discriminator is close to 0 0.5 because it's a binary classification We are ready to create the game model. We will use the OOP approach. First, we inherit from the keras.model and create a class called game. And then we create the member variables in the initial function in the constructor. Okay, so we create a discriminator 
and the generator use the two uh, network we create before and the lantern dimension also we create a mean of the uh, discriminator and the generator uh, loss metric so we calculate the mean of the discriminator and the uh, generator the loss function of discriminator is uh, binary cross entropy also the same the generator is also used the binary cross entropy because the final output is through the discriminator okay but we want to calculate the mean of the loss okay so we then compile uh, our network uh, our total game network and uh, uh, pass the optimizer the user can pass the optimizer uh, so this compile function overrides the compile function of Keras model right and the user can pass different optimizer for the discriminator and the generator so there are two parameters D optimizer and G optimizer but they use the same loss function of the binary cross entropy so there is only one uh, loss function parameter okay so and we also define the matrix function that return the uh, discriminator and the generator loss matrix let's implement the train step function of our class the function accept real images as input first we read the bench size of the input images then we create the same number of uh, noise vectors okay. we use the bench size and the predefined lantern dimension uh, to create noise vectors we extract uh, random value from the normal distribution the predefined latent, latent dimension in our case is 128 then we pass the random latent uh, vectors into the generator and uh, generate fake images uh, so the variable generated images uh, are the fake images then we combine the generate images with real images we need to create labels for our mixed data set uh, for the discriminator uh, if the uh, gen if the discriminator find that the input is fake image then the label is one otherwise should be zero uh, if the discriminator detect fake image then the output is one okay so there's another important trick we need to add random noise to the labels okay so add some noise to the labels okay so then we can finally uh, train the discriminator we train the discriminator using the mixed data set or the combined images including the fake and the real images and then we use the loss function uh, which is binary cross entropy and uh, pass the labels uh, into the uh, and the predictions into the loss function then calculate the gradient and then apply the optimizer to train the discriminator model uh, this is the train step uh, and this part trains the discriminator after training the discriminator it's time to train the generator again we need to extract uh, random noise from the normal distribution and also we create the labels but this time we want to create misleading labels we want to cheat the discriminator so we create a uh, label zero zero means that this is real images and we generate the fake images uh, from the new random data vectors then pass to the discriminator uh, remember uh, in training the generator we will reuse the param parameters of the discriminator 
uh, and uh, see if we can successfully uh, treat the discriminator. Right, so we pass the output to the discriminator, and then we use the binary cross entropy uh, to calculate the loss. Uh, use the misleading labels and the predictions. If the discriminator think that the uh, input are reals, uh, that is to say the output are zeros, uh, then we succeed, and then there is no loss. Uh, so we use the misleading labels to try to fool the discriminator. Uh, but we only uh, do gradient descent or calculate gradient of the generator's weights or generator trainable weights. The parameters of the discriminator must be fixed. Then we apply the gradients uh, to the generator weights. Oh, okay. Then we update the loss matrix uh, of the discriminator and the generator. And finally, we return the result. So this is the complete train step of our game model. We have complete our game model. Now we want to monitor the training process and save the intermediate result. Here is the class game monitor. We inherit the Keras callback function. So uh, initially we defined how many uh, images we want and the latent uh, dimension of the noise vector. Then on each epoch end, uh, we generate random noise uh, from normal distribution and call the generator to generate uh, images. Uh, okay, then we save the intermediate results, uh, the temporary images after each epoch. So we can see the progress of training of generate of learning to generate fake images. That will give us some insight about how GAN network learn to generate fake images. Finally, let's compile and train GAN network. We will run 100 epochs to get good enough results. Uh, and we let's create the game instance. Uh, so we pass the discriminator and the generator networks into our game network. Uh, and then the predefined lat latent dimension. Then we compile our game model. Uh, we use ADM for both the uh, discriminator and the generator. Uh, we use ADM as the optimizer and we use the binary cross entropy as our loss function. Uh, finally, we call fit uh, to train our model. Uh, we also pass the monitor uh, and uh, we will generate 10 fake images uh, after each epoch ends. And we can see how the GAN network learns uh, to generate the fake data. Here are some training results. In the first epoch, we can see there's roughly a face-like object, but we cannot see the details. And gradually, we will see that the network learn how to generate human face. In the first two images, you can also see some checkerboard artifact. But after around 20 epochs, uh, there we can uh, start to identify the face. Okay, and after 27, 28, uh, it's more like a celebrity face. So you can try the call by yourself. Now let's look at some interesting game applications. In my opinion, the most important game application is DeepFake. Here's another demo video of DeepFake. It's called DeepFake Roundtable. Here's the link. So in this video, uh, the Jeff Goblin is talking to Tom Cruise. Of course, because the body 
are different so you can tell that it is a fake image but you can see that the facial expression are very real so it's hard to tell if you only see their face face generation is another important application of game here are more examples from the website this person does not exist but this time sometimes you can see that the website generates some creepy image so there's a creepy person beside the main person so I call it this person and the creepy person do not exist so sometimes the game generate unrealistic images those are some examples here is the evolution of game face generation you can see it's uh, evolved from the low resolution small face image to high resolution and the very detailed human face so we can generate very realistic images in 2018 I guess now you want to know how to detect generated faces. In fact, there's a simple trick proposed by Stanford University that all the generated faces, their eyes can be aligned perfectly. As shown in this picture, all the fake faces or their eyes are perfectly aligned to the vertical and horizontal lines. So uh, the center between their eyes can be aligned in the uh, center uh, of the image. So by using the location of the eyes, you can detect fake images easier than we think. Another interesting application is anime game, which can be used to generate uh, animation girl's face. Here are the examples and you can try the function by visit this website here's the link of the paper I tried the website and here's my girl you can select different models uh, hair color, hair style, eye color uh, even skin or open mouth uh, many options and the quality is quite good so you can try to generate your dream lovers uh, if you feel lonely this is a very useful website. Another useful application is Super Resolution Game. Today, our devices such as TV or computer screens can support 4K resolution. But most videos are made in HD or lower resolution. So it will be helpful if we find a way to upscale images with high quality. So the author proposed the SR game, or super resolution game. We already have many methods to upscale images, but uh, the SR game provides highest quality. Here are some examples. Uh, this picture is the original image, and we will up its, uh, upscale it four times on then downscale. Uh, if we use bicubic uh, algorithm to upscale images, we will get a somehow a blurry images. If we use another deep learning model, then it's uh, become better. And if we use the game approach to train to learn how to upscale images, then we get highest quality. We get lowest PSNR value, which means we have less noise and higher quality. However, uh, the quality of the image is subjective. Uh, it's a personal feeling, so sometimes hard to measure. We can only use PSNR, but uh, after testing many years, uh, the uh, SR gain uh, provide the highest quality. Therefore, you should try the gain method if you want to uh, generate super resolution images. In the TensorFlow tutorial under the generative page, there are more game models that you can run and play with it. Let's look at the examples. The original game model accepts random noise and then generates random images. 
what if we can give it some example then generate the images that we want oh, this is pixel to pixel game model okay it's also called image to image translation now we can give for example the segmentation of the image then the model will output uh, the corresponding realistic photo or we can give uh, the aerial image uh, then the model will generate map automatically uh, most interesting example is that we can give the sketch uh, the edges of the image then the model will generate photo so this is the image to image translation with conditional adversarial networks this model is called conditional adversarial networks let's see how to train the conditional game so what is condition condition is the input we give to the generator and we want it to generate uh, our target in this case the condition is the age of the shoe and uh, the generator will generate the photo of the shoe but the trick is that both the generator and the discriminator observe the input age map so we will provide the age map to both the generator and the discriminator uh, this is the same when the discriminator is learned to distinguish real images from fake images so now the inputs for the discriminator are uh, sent in pairs uh, the pair with the uh, target image and the conditional image and uh, after training that the generator can learn that use the conditional image to generate the target image another important trick is to use the unit uh, and the patch game as the discriminator the author create a demo website called image to image demo so you can try the website by yourself here are some interesting results made by other people one model that will translate any input into a cat so uh, ivy tai uh, draw a toast and there's a cat toast another model can do background remove removal or sketch to a Pokemon also Yanga can try this demo by himself and draw a photo also this is the profile maybe of himself okay so you can also try the sketch to portrait model this is my work I draw a computer and then uh, translate into a cat so this is a cat computer go try by yourself it's very interesting another important model is cycle game cycle game can learn how to translate an image from one domain into the other and then vice versa so it can reverse the image back to original domain here are some examples uh, first is Monet to photo translation the cycle game model can translate Monet's painting into real photo also translate the real photo back to Monet it can also translate zebra into horse or horse into zebra uh, the image uh, of summer into winter uh, or translate image of winter into summer and also it can be used to translate photograph photograph into different style so it's actually replaced the neural style transfer it's much faster than the neural style transfer so we can use cycle game to translate images into different style to translate functions between two domains we need to learn two mapping functions g which translate image from x to y domain and f which translate image in y domain back to x domain and we will have two laws two cycle consistency laws 
So the first is called forward cycle consistency. Uh, we will uh, translate x into y. Uh, so we call g of x to translate x into y. Then we call f of g of x uh, to translate it back and it should be equal to x. Another one is the backward cycle consistency laws. Uh, so we use f of y to translate y into x domain then we call g of x of y uh, then the output should be equal to y okay so here's the uh, illustration of cycle game uh, we call function g to translate x into y y then we can call function x to translate y back into x okay so that's why it's called cycle or it creates a cycle There are some examples from the TensorFlow cycle game tutorial. Uh, as we can see, uh, the model learned to translate horse into zebra. So it can translate different kind of horse into zebra, although not perfect. Uh, but it, in some case, uh, it can generate quite good results. NVIDIA create an art tool called GauGam, which can generate photorealistic images uh, using only a few strokes or even text. This image shows the text-to-image example that you just need to type ocean waves hitting rocks, then it will generate corresponding images. You can try GauGam in NVIDIA AI Playground. Here's the web page. The demo is called Paint Me a Picture. It's the Gao Game 2, second version of Gao Game. There are also other interesting applications that you can try in the AI Playground. This is my work by Gao Game. I draw this bird airplane, and then Gao Game can generate an art piece for me. I like it, this photo. Game can also be used for adversarial attack. This is proposed by Ian Goodfellow. Ian finds that we can uh, train model to learn some noise. That if we add the noise into original image, human cannot tell the difference. However, the noise can cheat the deep learning model that make the model believe this is another image. This is because the deep neural networks are sensitive to noise, sensitive to parameters change. So we can uh, hide some noise inside the network uh, and uh, make the model, uh, cheat the model to believe it's another image. In this example, uh, this is an image of Panda, uh, and then we can add some learned noise into the image. So after ending the image, there's uh, no difference for our humans. Uh, our humans cannot tell the difference. However, the image can cheat the deep learning model to make it believe it is gibbon with very high confidence. This is called adversarial attack. You can use adversarial attack to fool AI surveillance cameras, but it only works for deep learning based cameras. So here's an example. The researchers have trained a photo that if you put the photo in front of you, then you disappear in the surveillance camera. You disappear in the deep learning model if you put this photo in front of you. But please note that uh, modern cameras use different kinds of AI models, uh, not only deep learning. And uh, the adversarial attacks only works for deep learning models. Here are the key takeaways of today's class. The generative adversarial networks has two sub-networks, generator and discriminator. 
the two networks compete with each other. And the training is done if the discriminator fails to detect fake images. In other words, it cannot uh, tell real and the fake images apart. So the accuracy will be equal to 0 0.5. It's like a random guess if the image is real or fake. Games are hard to train. There is no guarantee of convergence. Uh, introducing some randomness during training may be helpful. It is important trick to prevent games stuck at some point or never learn. Max pooling and redo uh, introduce sparsity in the networks and may hinder the training of game. Conditional games can accept conditional images as inputs and then generate the target outputs. Cycle game can translate images from one domain to the other domain and then transname back. So it's like a cycle or translate between two domains.